with madman Keith Nelson. Keith, uh, how did you start juggling? Um, I started juggling because my best friend in college, David Hunt, um, was a juggler and started teaching me the basics of a cascade mm -hmm. and, you know, from there, um, started following the dead alert, you know, really getting a devil stick. Devil stick. Okay, how old I were you mean, at the that time? That was my you're, gateway prop. Well, how old were you when you started? 18. 18, okay. So then you just kind of picked it up. Now, you're like really known for doing extreme stunts, you know, like the Kadama and the nose and stuff like that. But you also juggle as well. What, what made you go into the, the extreme world, the danger zone? Um, I mean, I started on a performing level. I started with, um, as a fire eater, really, on a professional level. Okay. Um, after college, I learned how, cool. to, you know, learned how to juggle and eat fire in college and basically traded a bottle of whiskey to a group of jugglers to learn how to um, eat fire and then moved to New York and got a job as a fire eater in a, in a cabaret. Wow. And it was at that moment, it's like, I can make a living doing this? Um, so yeah, in the beginning it was you know, kind of hanging out with the sideshow crew, um, mm -hmm. blockheading, um, and then you know, really felt that I wanted to learn how to sword swallow. Wow. Um, What's your favorite prop? What do you like the most? Favorite prop. Um, favorite prop goes in waves. Currently, I'm what do you like now? And then, what did you like back in those I mean, days? I, I, um, I'm, I love artistic. I'm getting into artistic bicycle. Okay, cool. Um, which is probably not the best thing to start in middle age. You know, it's like a you should be 14 year old gymnast when you really get into it. But it's never. Um, always been a lover of spin tops and rope spinning lassos. Mm -hmm. um, the more esoteric props. Um, cool. You know, I, I just bought a new set of clubs, and I don't mind the ball juggling when people aren't looking. Right. Um, but when it really comes to, you know, when I think about performing and what I really get into. Mm -hmm. um, what the audience could understand in aspects could, too, right? Yeah. And uh, it's also you look around and, you know, what aren't people doing much that somebody may have a need for. Exactly. So that gives me my next point. So what is, like, some advice that you would give to someone who's wanting to be a professional performer as you and traveling? What kind of things have you learned that you feel like, okay, you know what, do this and it might help you? Or what you've learned um, in the past of what you're doing now? Um, in the beginning, you're going to suck a lot. Accept that. Enjoy that. And be ready, and hopefully have another chance to. You know, you suck tonight. Hopefully, you have a chance tomorrow to try to suck less. To suck less. <laughs> um, first hundred times of the new act is probably going to suck. Accept that. Mm -hmm. um, but then just have the perseverance to keep going, keep liking it, keep trying. Mm -hmm. um, life is hard. You know, it's your seven minutes. Like especially if you're doing group stuff, your seven minutes are nice. The other twenty three hours are crucial. You know, of being generally useful, helping out. Um, you know, it takes a lot more than technically what you're doing in the ring, the show, the stage, um, to make something work. Right. And in a group cast, you know, it's getting along and making being it able easy to travel for together everybody. And so, forth. so much more important to me than yeah. Um, you know, some of the and you, you have your own show, so it's like you know, you do other things in that aspect. Where, what are some things that you should point out that do this and this will help you off a lot better in your career? I mean, when somebody said, like, what does it take to be a clown? I'm like, poverty and homelessness is a really good start. So you just, you're kind of at the bottom, which, you know, mm -hmm. I do a tramp clown, and that's kind of the character that I base it on. Um, but you just really start watching humanity in that sense and feeling, right. feeling it from a basic level, you know, in that realm. Um, what made you want to do that? What, what, what inspired you? Like, any... I come kind of from an anarchist tradition, um, street theater, trying to open people's minds, the clown being a mirror of society, being mm -hmm. a kind of a gateway for people to start hopefully think about something. Yeah. You know, you kind of cool. enter um, like through circus as a as a medium. You know, especially the early days of Bindlestiff Family Circus, we mm -hmm. um, were extremely political, had a message, but you know, with the vehicle of circus, people let down their guard. Mm. Um, okay. And they're there to be entertained, and then hopefully you can leave them thinking. Ah, cool. Um, breathe, uh, take time, and talk to them. Um, you know, enjoy the moment you're there, but like, yeah. listen to your audience and just be there with them. Um, yeah. I mean, Avner the Eccentric, his big thing is being able to breathe on stage. Okay. So if you hold your breath, the whole audience is going to hold so their breath and be tense. breathing is very important in performing. Breathing and just being like, being real there and being natural there, at least with the style of what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think breathing is crucial to everybody. Like, it just relaxes you if you're doing tricks. Your breath becomes very crucial to hitting things right. You know, if you're holding breath, you're tensing right. up. 
and you're going to drop. I mean, like if you watch, especially probably tonight in competition, folks that aren't used to the stage or are getting really tense because it's competition. You'll see it, right? They're like, <gasps> and you know, after that first drop, they can't relax yeah. and get it, you know, because their whole body is like, Ugh. well, then tell me that practicing. How many hours a day do you practice, or how, how many times? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> when you run through a routine or you have a comedy bit that you want to run through, how how many times do you think you should do that before you go on stage? A hundred times or one. One time. Yeah, you, you um, if that. Um, I mean, it depends. You, you I, I run a circus open mic night, so once a month I get a chance to just try shit out in front awesome. of an audience. Awesome. Um, I've created an audience in an environment that's extremely supportive for people to suck. Um, not that everything there sucks, but you comfortably can and have support and not then try to slink out and have to hide after the show. Um, so, I mean, I use that as my creative realm, um, you know, because so much of what I do yeah. is not based on the technical sk I mean, I, you know, I'll practice the technical aspects, but so much of it is the right. moment with the audience. So when you see this, how many times have you come with this, wow, this, this, this joke kills all the time. Has most of it come from just things happening on stage? You can't always just plan, okay, I'm going to script this. When it really happens, most of the, the magic, magic happens when spontaneous things happen or a kid walks on stage or this or that. Have you or things realized write, that? Things right in my world, they, they write okay, cool. themselves over time. You know, like, oh, wait, that, if I say it that way, it kind of works. And then the next time I try it, that time again, and kind of build upon that. So it's not like... I'm not one who sits so it's down a process. and writes, I don't write material in this way that like, right. um, I may go out there with a m mental structure of an idea, an idea okay. and then just see kind of what comes out. Okay. And then um, go with it, go with the flow from there. And then, wow. you know, then you'll that's wild. Seeing, <laughs> two years later, you'll see that I'm starting to say the same thing every single time and I start figuring it out. But, um, yeah. You know, I, I, so it's, a, it's a process. Yeah. For me, it's always a process. It's not something you just wake up and say, okay, I got it. This is yeah. how it's going to work. It's going to kill every time. It's mm -hmm. going to be every day a process of, okay, this works, that works. Yeah. Okay. I, like my plate spinning act took probably three years from inception to like now. You know, first of all, I was building the rack, finding the right, right props that worked, and each time just kind of building it and building yeah. it. Um, how, much, how much time goes into building your props? Like, what would you say? instead of just going out there and doing your shows, how much time is the backstage work? I mean, for me, I, you know, I'm a co-founder of Bindlestead Family Circus, and most of my time is at a computer, either trying to book the show, find performers for events, writing grants. Wow. Um, dealing with insurance, dealing with travel, dealing with, you know, like, the office end yeah. takes all of my time, so at the end of the week, it's like, what was my, tra you know, what was my practice time? Not, uh, not, like, not much. Um, wow. I mean, it tells me you're juggling a lot of things. Uh, yeah. Always. Yeah. If you had to say one last thing, um, if you had to say what juggling or performing and the lifestyle you've ha now had for many years, what has been uh, given back into you that you think juggling has given me this? Being able to be a professional juggler has given me this. I, um, being, I mean, for me, it's beyond just juggling. It's being an entertainer, being circus, which um, to me, circus and juggling, they're international um, art forms that... Mm -hmm. You get to travel the world and be a part of this community. Awesome. Um, that it's just you know phenomenal on so many different levels. Like you see three clubs out of somebody's bag, you may not speak a word of the same language, but you now have a connection that is so intense with them. Right. Or a spin top like last night, you know, with Spanish speaking, English speaking, you know, we we're all just hanging out, throwing tops, mm -hmm. um, and could understand the prop but not the word. Right. Right. Um, that's, I mean, to me, that, I think that's awesome. It's just a universal language. No matter where you go in entertainment, you can travel the world, know someone that juggles, and say, hey, you know, we can do this Any together. Any last words or advice that you give someone that wants to just be a performer like you? Go see, watch everybody, good and bad, and the more that you can take in, the more you can put out, you know. But go see shows, support everything from contemporary to tra traditional classic circus, uh, you know, like there's something to be garnered from every single little element you know awesome. like you're, you see these days like people are like i can't stand contemporary circus i can't stand old school you know that's there's elements that you're going to get um you know especially if you're a performer um you're probably going to have to end up working all of those mm -hmm. too i mean if you want to eat um you work wherever you can yeah um you know maybe crappy gig today and tomorrow you're being flown somewhere nice and it's a you know so take it all in. Yeah. Take it all in. Well, thank you, Keith. Absolutely. My I really appreciate it. Check out it. Keith Nelton. He is awesome. Madman. Very crazy show.